should you be buying a used Mini? My partner just picked this one up, so I thought it'd be a good chance for us to check it out, see if it's any good, and see if, well, it's something you'd be interested in picking up. Now this is the Park Lane model. It's also a Cooper, which means it has the 1.6 litre engine up front, non-supercharged. The Cooper S is the supercharged one. You can also buy the 1 and the 1D, uh, which are diesel and smaller engine petrol models, I think. Um, and there are a wide variety of different options that can get you different powers, uh, power amounts, a uh, different fuel economy, and quite a different driving experience. This one is the, like I said, petrol 1.6 liter naturally aspirated engine with the five speed manual gearbox. Although you can get it with a six speed manual, even on the petrol model, apparently. And you can even get it with the uh, CVT automatic um, continuously variable transmission if you want to. It seems like a great all-rounder, which is really what this is for. It's for a you know, young driver or maybe old driver who doesn't want a massive car, but still wants the practicality of being able to fit some stuff in the boot. And even if you can't fit it in the boot, fold the rear seats down and get a fairly reasonable driving experience. You can cart around pretty much anything, including six foot adults in the back. I do fit in the back of this, as long as the front seats aren't too far uh, adjusted backwards. Uh, and you could still definitely get, say, two kids in the back while parents are in the front if you really wanted to. Might be a bit of a faff since this is the three-door model rather than a five-door, so you do have to fold the seats forward, but it's still easy enough to drive, still comfortable enough, certainly, um, and yeah, it's, it's a good enough experience. Now, like I said, this is mostly a city car, although if you did want to use it, take it up to motorway speeds like I am now, there really isn't much problem with it. The a wheelbase length is long enough uh, and it's a, a stable enough car that it is reasonably comfortable to, to say, do a longer journey in on the motorways. It's certainly not something that I'd be concerned with using on the motorways. The only thing that I would say is that there is quite a lot of wind noise and even in this Park Lane Edition model, one of the higher end trims that you can get, at least for this model year, uh, it is quite loud in here and there is quite a lot of wind noise from the front and even tire noise and stuff like that too. Now speaking of the size, it's actually pretty good. It's not a large car by any stretch. I mean, Mini is in its name and while it's not as small as the original, it's certainly small enough to be a, a really easy to, to drive around sort of city car, uh, as well as still being big enough and stable enough to being a motorway cruiser if you wanted it to be. Acceleration definitely isn't bad. You do have to get into the higher RPMs before the engine really kind of comes alive, but if you're willing to rev it out, you can have a bit of fun in it. It's certainly a, a sporty enough feel. The, the steering is relatively heavy, which does make for a good experience, and being a manual with a pretty reasonable or pretty um, engaged clutch feel uh, does feel pretty good if you were on the, the sportier side. Although, of course, the Cooper S model will have even more power and even more grunts to go with it. And while we're talking about sportiness, what's interesting is that maybe just because the pedal box is so small or maybe by design, it's actually really easy to heel to a downshift in the car. Uh, it's, it's a funny one, but it's very easy to do. And if you were driving it, you know, quickly uh, or spiritedly, uh, it does make for a pretty fun, pretty engaging drive while you're at it. One weird thing with the car is the shifter. I don't know whether it's just this specific model or, or what, but it is quite a stiff, especially side to side motion. It's a little bit difficult to get into gear. It's quite notchy and I definitely like that, but it's also a little on the, the stiff side, can be a little bit difficult to get used to. Also the clutch pedal is another kind of strange one. It is, again, a little on the, um, yeah, short throw side. There really isn't much travel uh, that you have available to you. So uh, it can be a little bit difficult to modulate it, but you get used to it pretty quickly. As for practicality, like I said, you can fit two adults in the back as long as your front seat passengers aren't too large. Uh, like I said, I do fit in the back and you can fold those rear seats down if you want to get larger items of cargo in. You can also remove the, the uh, parcel shelf, which does fit in the sort of sump in the boot 
that the seats end up creating. Uh, and even if you don't want to put the seats down, there is a, a reasonable enough space to fit a couple of bags of grocery shopping in there if you need to. Up in the front, because this is a, the Park Lane model, you do have leather seats, which are pretty comfortable and have pretty much every adjustment you would expect. Manual, but you know, what else can you expect? And you even have heated seats. It's kind of a rare one to see in this, this class of car, and uh, I believe that is just because this is the, the Park Lane model, but uh, even the, the normal uh, editions, the, the non, you know, limited edition run type cars, uh, those still have pretty comfortable seats, and the interiors aren't too bad. It does feel a little bit cheap in here. Everything is a bit kind of cheap chrome plastics and that sort of stuff. But again, for the, the sort of price that you're paying, this Park Lane model, which does command a premium, was around £4,000, uh, whereas a standard one might be more like £3,000 for the same sort of mileage uh, and even engine uh, capacity and setup. So for that kind of money, I'm not too mad. One quirk of the Mini has to be its center-mounted speedo and basically the entire instrument cluster. You do have a small gauge in front of you uh, with, with a tachometer, uh, your rev counter in it, as well as a small digital display to show you your speed, which I really like. But everything else that you would normally have in an a get instrument cluster, like your fuel, your uh, coolant temp, even your uh, odometer, your mileage counter, is all here in the middle, which does take a bit of getting used to. The interior quality isn't amazing, even in this Park Lane model, which is pretty much the highest end trim that they offered at the, the point of time when this was sold in 2006. Uh, it's still, the interior feel is still not fantastic. The steering wheel feels reasonably cheap. The switch gear feels very cheap. Um, and even the radio uh, setup and you know, like um, climate controls aren't fantastic but again for the, the sort of price that you're paying for one of these used i can't really be too mad the suspension as you can hear is a little on the rough side it's a little firm it's a little less forgiving than you might like it's obviously not a, a luxury car but it's a lot more comfortable than i was actually expecting it's still comfortable enough that you could like i said take on the motorway or if you're just cruising around the town or cities that's a big one. Um, it's still gonna be a comfortable enough experience. I don't think you would have uh, major problems with it, but it's also not, you know, a luxury car. Now, if you're planning on buying one of these cars, there are a few things that you need to look out for. From some of the models, especially this one, the front radiator mounts are very prone to cracking and breaking. And if it's had any level of front end impact, even light impacts, that can break it. So check the lower radiator mounts, just have a wiggle. And if, it's, if the radiator feels loose, then you know that that needs replacing. It is a complete front off the car job, although it's not overly difficult to do. So it's a bit of a, a mixed bag. You can also uh, look out when you start the car for the first time, especially if it's left cold for you, which I generally always recommend, uh, to listen out for the timing chain. These can wear out over time, including the guides and tensioners that hold them in place. And if they do wear out, that can be a catastrophic failure, uh, which you definitely don't want to have happen. So if it sounds rattly, it will need a replacement and that can be a fairly costly job since you do need to be able to support the engine and take the uh, uh, driver's side engine mount off to be able to replace that uh, and replace the, the full setup. So to keep that in mind when you go to inspect one. You'll also want to inspect for rust as these minis are very well known for having rust uh, attack them pretty hard. Uh, and so if they have any level of rust, make sure that you either steer clear of it, or you are willing to have that rust treated and repaired immediately. Otherwise, you could end up with serious holes in your chassis that would cause complete MOT failures and effectively have the car being written off if it's not treated well. There are a few other known issues depending on which model you have. If you have the supercharged model with the variable valve timing, then make sure that it's had regular uh, oil changes as non-regular oil changes means it, uh, the oil turns into sludge and blocks up the small passages that the variable valve timing uses. 
Also, if it has the CVT automatic transmission, make sure that if it's around 40 to 50,000 miles or above that, it's had an automatic transmission fluid flush and change as while Mini technically doesn't recommend it, it seems very necessary to have that done at around 40 to 50,000 miles. So should you buy one? Well, if you're looking for a small runabout for your kid or, you know, really anyone, this seems like a really nice option, especially if you're here in the UK, there are a whole load of these available for varying prices. You can buy them from private sellers for ridiculously cheap. And as long as they've been reasonably well maintained, and like I said, you don't find any rust on them, they seem to be great and fairly reliable runabouts that you can take on longer trips if you wanted to. For someone like my partner who isn't overly interested in having the, the most fun driving experience, but wants something relatively practical, still fairly nippy, but not, you know, a performance car, a standard Cooper model seems like the, the perfect fit. It's a reasonably practical car that really meets her requirements and the only thing that she's getting used to is driving a manual again from the uh, semi-automatic um, smart car gearbox that was absolutely awful and that I really don't recommend. So that's pretty much it from me at the wheel of this Mini. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this one mostly every week then feel free to hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon. I've also got a number of other videos, including reviewing my own Audi S4. Uh, I did a video on the Renault Hybrid E-Tech press launch, so if you're interested in that, check it out. And I did a video on how to inspect a used car. If you're planning on picking up a car, whether it's a, a Mini or anything else, feel free to check that one out. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. I would love to hear your thoughts about these Minis and these videos in the comments down below, so feel free to let me know. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.